Uh, I'm Jim Shafter and I'm interviewing Travis Ganong for SkiRacing.com and uh, I'm essentially here to talk to Travis about equipment because my area of expertise is in the back shop and the first thing I want to ask you is um, how important is just the, the, the whole concept of what you ski on and how you get service to your results? Um, yeah, having, I mean, so I have factory service now from Atomic, which is huge for my career as, as a downhiller on the World Cup Tour. And um, I mean, having, having access to those, the best skis and, and different constructions and new skis and testing different things and like always kind of just be on the, on the front edge of, of different equipment is really important to find, find the best equipment and, and be able to find the stuff that works in different conditions. And so I really rely a lot on my serviceman when it comes to, to picking out the skis that are going to work in the certain conditions and, and it's really important for me to do that so I can re relax and focus on the skiing part. My, so my first year on the World Cup uh, skiing on Atomic I was actually tuning my own skis and that so that summer um, I had this guy named Willie Wiltz uh, help me out with getting my skis ready for that winter. He was Darren Rolf's serviceman from back in the day and he lives out here in California so I had him kind of help me out that summer and then I showed up to one of the first races and I was tuning my own skis and at Lake Louise, I was winning the bottom split. And I was, at that point, I didn't have factory service. I was doing my own skis. So all the Atomic guys were kind of, they were looking around like, oh, wow, where'd you get these skis from? Like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, and that kind of caught their attention. And then I, I mean, after that, I got on the full factory tour and all that, or service and all that stuff. But it just goes to show that you can learn how to do your own skis and, and figure out a way to make them really fast and, and work really well for you. And it's, I mean, it's nice having the factory service now, but I was, it was cool to see how, with a little help from Willie, how I was able to get some fast skis. So I have a, a new serviceman this year. Um, his name's Lucas Rottinger, and he's, he's actually the same age as me. We're both 28 years old. Nice. Uh, he's this young Austrian guy who's he's, he's always worked on skis, and he's from Schladming, so he's near, near Altenmark, near the Atomic Factory. And uh, yeah, I just started working with him this summer, and it's awesome. He's, he's really motivated, and he's really hungry to get onto the World Cup and start getting some results for himself. This, the servicemen also take pride in, in getting results and, and, and the longer you're on the tour as a serviceman, the more results you have. So like this guy is his first year on the World Cup and he's really fired up and excited about what we can accomplish together. We're always testing different models and different stiffnesses, different base materials, different uh, constructions on the inside of the ski, different plates, different bindings. It's, it's endless really, the things we're testing. Okay, we're kind of limited to the amount of skis we can bring down because of budget because of we, we so we send everything through cargo um, to these trips so we pay per kilo pretty much so we bring down we, I mean there's a lot of thought that goes into it before the trips about what, what we want to test what are our what do we want to accomplish um, what are what are we looking at and then we pick out I think we probably had uh, 15 downhill skis and 15 super G skis these last couple trips and um, from those skis I mean there's that's a, a wide variety of different models and different constructions and so from those, we were able to pick out a few constructions that, that were and models of skis that were working better. And so now the next trip, we'll bring more of those skis and put, kind of put away the other ones. And gotcha. I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly how many skis we have at the beginning. I think probably like, I don't know, 30 pairs each of downhill Super G, maybe more, probably more. Um, and then it's just all summer long kind of dialing it in and figuring out which skis work better. And then each camp kind of whittling away at that number of skis and and i mean when we're traveling to these camps we can't bring all the skis just because of budget issues so and and time like you know you don't have enough time to ski on all those skis so right. um yeah i mean it's it's always a, a game of of working on the skis and then you also talk to other athletes that are skiing on the same product so like a lot of the other athletes from different countries that are testing atomic skis we're always talking and we're trying to figure out what they like and they're figuring out what we like and we're dialing it in to figure out which ski is going to win races pretty much so so that leads into my next question which is um how much interaction does atomic provide that way because you you guys all ski for your own federation yeah and in theory the federations are you know hoping to have their guys be on the top of the podium and you would think to some degree there'd be a little bit of secrecy but it sounds like as the company as the middleman how does that work in terms of getting that information traded yeah i think i think as far as that information goes like the the athletes are talking a little bit but it's mostly uh, the servicemen checking in with the factory um, after each training session and going through the times and and maybe looking at the videos and kind of just coming up with little generalizations about how the skis are working and also from feedback from us so i think the the fact that's another reason why factory service is really important because they have direct 
uh, communication with the factory and where the skis are being built. And then all the different servicemen from the different athletes are kind of pooling their information and, and figuring out which skis are working the best. And we have the U.S. team, we have a partnership with the Norwegians now. So um, with, with Kilde and myself, we, we're training a lot together. And so we're able to talk about which skis we like and which constructions are better. And it's always, it's always kind of coming down to the clock as well. Like the clock is a part of it in the summer. The feeling is a big part of it in the summer, but also you want to make sure you're, that what you're skiing on is fast. Sometimes what you ski on, it doesn't feel good, but you're fast. So that's another thing to always keep in mind. So, I mean, yeah, all summer long when we're tweaking the equipment and finding which skis work, we're communicating with the factory, with our serviceman, with other athletes. Um, and I mean, it's the goal, every, everyone in the summer is the goal is to like figure out the equipment. And then once winter starts, it's kind of a little different how right. the information okay. is shared and who's skiing on what and blah, blah, blah. It's kind of, then, it, then it's more secret, I guess. But in the summer, it's all about kind of testing the skis. And there's always new stuff that we're testing and giving feedback to the factory so that they can, produce skis to sell to, to younger racers into the, in, into the market, which are the best possible skis. So that's, right. that's the ultimate goal. We're testing out the skis for them.